Hi, everyone. Welcome again to Conversational English. Today we have for you Unit 2 that includes Lessons 4, 5, and 6. Today we look at the first of those lessons, Lesson 4. We are going to be talking about the telephone quite a bit today. And if you look at your textbook, you will see that the uh, object of our workbook lesson today is going to be telephone etiquette. Now lessons four and five are a special two-part lesson. Lesson four has a very important telephone call that continues at the beginning of lesson five. So this is an opportunity for us to see a longer story within two lessons. Mm. 好,所以各位同學大家好,我們今天呢來正式進入Unit 2的單元,那這個第二單元呢,它包含了第四課跟第五課,那同學們可以看到其實Bruce老師他非常用心,他除了呢在英語的這個內容的本身上面之外,在編這個劇情的時候呢,他都為同學們有這個規劃好了在第
What I had in mind is more of an informal agreement. To help each other out as the occasion arises to expand our operations. For example, if you have a project where we could help you out, you would contact us and vice versa. So far so good, Mr. Pennington, but I'd like you to elaborate a bit more. To be continued. We'll talk about that as well as words like elaborate a bit more. And next week we will finish the telephone conversation that you just saw mm -hmm. and there'll be some activity because of this telephone call. This telephone call generates uh, everything else that happens in book two. Hmm. So we can call it a seminal lesson. Okay. That's spelled S-E-M-I-N-A-L. Hmm. S-E-M-I-N-A-L. Something that is seminal produces or generates many more things that will happen. 所以呢，这个字的话，同学可以记下，就是其实是说这这一次的第四课这个电话呢，它呢带出了所有接下来所有剧情的发展，所以它就是一个这样子的一个衍生的很关键的一个这个呃一集啊，所以刚刚讲的
someone living in the United Kingdom or Australia or one of the Commonwealth countries. 是的，那所以这边呢，不如嫂子替我们补充的就是，在英式呢 ，O R 的这个呃拼法常常出现的是 O U R， 所以同学们看到有一些字呢，你在美式的拼法里是 O R 结尾的，你如果在英式看到 O U R， 你就知道它不是一个错误，那是它你很容易在未来更多的字都会见到，所以这这个记下来就可以了。OK， OK， Let's go ahead with number six. Proposal. Proposal. Dick's proposal to expand our office space by renting another floor of the office building was accepted by the board. 董事会接受了迪克的提案，以租赁办公大楼另一楼层的方式来扩展公司的办公空间。Connect. Connect. 连线。The company operator connected me to the manager's office. 公司的总机把我的来电连线到经理的办公室。Recommend. Recommend. 推荐建议。The labor union recommended building a recreation room for the workers, and the management approved it. 劳工联盟建议替员工来新建一个娱乐间，而管理阶层也同意了。Mutual, mutual， 共同的，相互的。Fortunately for Peter, his love for Beth was mutual. They married last month. 非常幸运的，彼得对贝斯的爱是相互的，他们上个月结婚了。Cooperate. Cooperate. 合作 Children should be taught to cooperate with others, not only compete with them. 我们应该要教导小孩和他人合作，而不只是相互的竞争 I'd like to add here. You might see in English writing the same word, but with a 短线 between the two O's. C O hyphen. H y p h e n hyphen 短线 c o hyphen o p e r a t e. That's simply another way to spell the word. More modern spelling doesn't use the hyphen anymore. 嗯，好，所以呢 ，Bruce 老师他其中有一个这个 talent 专长。就是呢，在介绍一个单字里头，再让你遇到更多的单字。所以呢，刚刚讲到这个 cooperate， 中间有一个短线。所以刚刚如果同学突然之间不知道 h y 什么什么什么这个字 ，hyphen 其实是 Bruce 老师顺便补充短线这个字的英文啊、哦。那我们有时候会看到 c o 短线，然后 operate 跟 cooperate 其实基本上它是一样的意思。But there is there is one confusing word for Chinese students. 就是同学可能会混淆，常常看到有一个字叫 corporate. Corporate. Corporate 就是公司。哦、oh, Right.、Yeah. 但是呢，常常同学会拿这两个字来问我，跟 cooperate 说这两个是一样的吗、uh -huh. ？So can we spell that, please? Sure.、Uh, corporate, C O R, just one O. That's right. C O R P O R A T E. Uh, corporate, not cooperate. 不一样 Thank you very much. 好，所以同学看到以后公司或企业这个字，就是刚刚的 Bruce 老师后面拼的这一个 corporate， 而且呢没有中间的短线的可能 No. Okay. Because there's only one O. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Please continue. Let's continue. Number eleven. Venture. Venture. 投资 Our new business venture is not working out so well. We're losing money on it. 我们新的投资案不怎么成功，我们损失了一些资金。好，那同学看到课本上有一个印刷的错误，它写成投机活动，其实应该要改成投资就可以，或投资案。哦，同学再写一下。Okay. Okay. As usual, let's continue. Market. Market. 市场。The market outlook for children's clothing is not very positive, 
due to the decreasing number of children being born. 童装市场的前景不太乐观，因为新生儿的数量在逐渐的减少。Potential, potential. 潜力 With his first-rate education and more than ten years' work experience, Thomas has great potential to find a good job. Thomas has a high school education and has more than ten years' work experience, so he has great potential to find a good job. Merger, merger. 合并 The two publishing companies decided that a merger would make up for their weaknesses and increase their strengths. 两家出版社呢决定合并来弥补彼此的缺点，并增强实力。Effective, effective. 有效率的。The new medicine the doctor prescribed my mother is more effective than the old one. So my mother is feeling better. 医生开给妈妈的新药比之前的更有效，所以呢，妈妈身体舒服多了。Entity, entity, 个体，组织。An NGO is an entity that does its work not with government support, but with support from the private sector. 非政府组织是一种靠着民间部门赞助，而不是由政府补助的组织团体。Colleague, colleague, 同事。Our new colleague is working out very well. He is diligent, considerate, and hardworking. 我们的新同事做得很好，他人勤劳、贴心又认真工作。Informal, informal. 非正式。The manager agreed to an informal interview with a newspaper reporter. He did not want his views printed in the news. 经理同意接受报社记者的非正式采访，他不想公开他的个人意见。Agreement, agreement. 协定。The two countries finally reached an agreement to share their common water resources, so as to prevent a war between them. 两国终于达成了共享他们共有水资源的这个协定，来预防战争的发生。Arise, arise. 发生。When problems arise. It is important to remember that we are more important than any of them. When a problem arises, the most important thing is to remember that we are more important than any of them. Operation. 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 The villagers complained about the mining operation, which was polluting their land and water. 村民们抱怨采矿的运作会污染他们的土地和水源。Project, project. 案子。I can't join you on your trip this weekend because I haven't yet finished working on an important project. 我这个周末不能跟你们一起出去玩了，因为我有一个重要的案子还没完成。Vice versa. Vice versa. 反之亦然 It's hot and dry in the summer in Taipei, but in the winter, it's vice versa. 台北的夏天又热又干，而冬天则相反 Elaborate. Elaborate. 详细说明 After a student asked the professor a question about his business model, the professor elaborated on his ideas. 学生在问了教授和他的企业模式相关的这个问题之后
，教授详细的说明了他的想法。To be continued. To be continued. 待续。The exciting TV program was not finished at the end of the hour. It is to be continued next week. 这个精彩的电视节目呢，在最后还没完结。那么下周我们待续。Okay, we're going to take a break now for you to relax, and when we come back, we'll take a look at parts four and five. 我们休息一下，马上回来。Part four is as simple as it is. Important this week, in your workbook, you'll be able to find a lot of good information about telephone etiquette, which should be no surprise because lessons four and five deal with such an important telephone call. 嗯，所以呢，在我们这一次本周的资讯补给站里面，会教大家呢一些这个电话上的礼节，因为电话礼节是在这个工作上还有社交上很重要的一环，所以呢，同学们可以好好的来这个跟布斯老师学一下。Okay, and now let's take a look at Part Five Quiz. Our quiz today is, I think, rather novel. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit new, but I've noticed、um, some differences in telephone etiquette and how people use the telephone here in Taiwan compared to how we use the telephone and what we say in the United States using English. So what we have is a situation where you just hear part of a telephone conversation. And you have to think, the person who makes the call. I want to call you. I am the caller. You are the callee. C A L L E E. So we will show you on the screen just some very short parts of a telephone conversation, and you think, well, who says that? The person who calls, the caller, or the person who receives the call, the callee. 嗯，好，这一次呢，这个呃，测验个人，这个 Lori 老师也给很高的评价，因为他是这个蛮创新的，就是刚刚布鲁斯老师讲的一个字叫 novel， right？ 啊，并不是那个小说的那个那个 novel， <笑>但是他这个是指比较有新意的、比较不同的，所以我们要从这个呃五个题目里面呢，请同学来辨认他是打电话的那一方还是接电话的那一方。All right， so let's start now. Okay， number one. Who would say I'll connect you with Mr. Brown. Of course, the answer here is the callee. The woman gets the call and will connect. We don't see him.、Uh, there's a Mr. Brown. He's the third person here. But the man who called is the caller. The woman is the callee, and the third person is Mr. Brown. That's right. So, 呢，这个第一题答案我们会选的是 callee， 就是这个接电的人。And number two, who would say thank you for calling? Of course, this would also be the callee. That's right. 那这题就更简单了啊！谢谢您的来电。那他当然是接电话的人了。Number three, who would say <laughs> hello? <laughs> hello. If you don't know, the callee is the one who says hello, not the caller, and that's what most of my students do by mistake. Okay, so this is the point because it has a question mark, right? Yes. So this is the call phone. They say hello. If it is a caller, his hello should be a big exclamation point. Well, usually he doesn't say anything. The first person who answers the phone is the callee, not the caller. Okay, good. So this is very important. Usually, when we call the phone, maybe two people have to first say hello. But in English, usually the first person who answers the phone is the caller, not the caller. Okay, good. So this is very important. If I call Lori, I won't say anything until she says hello. Hello. 这样子 ，OK？ 好，所以这个第三题也是 callee 啊。Number four. Who says, "How may I help you?" Again, it's the callee who would ask that. 
。对，所以这一题呢，我能为您做什么，或者是呃呃，您需要什么样的服务吗？那这个当然也是接电话的人，所以我们选 call lead。All right, number five, who would say, I'm looking for Susan Anthony, please. Well, this time we finally have something from the caller. That's right. Oh, so, 呢，你好，我要找这个 Susan Anthony。那当然就是来电的人。Okay. That's it for the quiz. Now we're ready to view the dialogue for the second time on the program. At our budget meeting this morning, I'm all yours.、Um, what concerns you is our discussion about our office decorations. Doesn't Ed like them? Oh no, he loves them. We all do. It's just they are really expensive. We thought about not decorating every month, but Marco and George insisted that we keep changing our look once every month or so. So nothing changed. Not exactly. Ed hopes you can find a way to reduce the expenses while keeping our ever-changing decorations. Well, you get what you pay for, but I will do my best. <coughs> Excuse me a minute, Betty. <coughs> Sublime Tudors, Lulu speaking. How may I help you? I'd like to speak with Edward Hudson, please. May I ask who's calling? I'm sorry. I should have introduced myself. I'm David Pennington at Harbour Decorating. I have a business proposal to discuss with him. Certainly, Mr. Pennington. Just a moment, and I will come at you. Ed, you have a call on line seven. It's a man from England. He wants to talk over some business with Ed. I hope it's good news. Good morning, Ed Hudson here. Mr. Hudson, this is David Pennington. I'm with an interior decorating company in Hong Kong called Harbour Decorating. Your firm was recommended to me by a mutual friend, Arnold Shu in Taipei. Oh, yes, Mr. Pennington. Arnold and I are old friends. How can I help you? I would like to propose that our companies cooperate on certain business ventures, in order to increase our market potential. You're not talking about a merger, are you? Oh no, I think we could be more effective as two separate entities. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't think my colleagues would be in favor of making life more complicated, if you know what I mean. I certainly do. No, what I had in mind is more of an informal agreement to help each other out as the occasion arises to expand our operations. For example, if you have a project where we could help you out, you would contact us, and vice versa. So far, so good, Mr. Pennington. But I'd like you to elaborate a bit more. Join us next week for lesson five and the end of this seminal, important telephone call. And until then, bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>